Marine friends. Well, I'm working on the dive planes now. And so that's this guy right here. So this is what makes the submarine raise or lower, raise or lower when you give forward motion. So it's like the wing on an airplane. So I actually had this up front here first and then I got some advice from a fellow in Germany, Karsten Stanfoss, who built a 70 ton personal diesel submarine. The thing is just massive. But anyways, his concern was drag, which really isn't my concern. Another concern he had was boats. So if you have this thing sticking out the side below the water line, it could tear a boat in half. So if somebody was to pull up and visit or something, they would run into this. And this is, this is really strong and it's on a one inch solid shaft. So, you know, it's not going to give easily. So based on his comments, I moved it. Now I was concerned about boats myself, but when I dive this thing, there's really no boat traffic other than my own. And it was low enough under the water that my inflatable boat would just float over top. But he has a very legitimate point. So uh, because he built a 70 ton submarine and I did not, I will take his advice. So here we are. And this is actually where the dive planes are on most submarines. So I'm pretty happy with it. I have a hydraulic cylinder here somewhere. So I have this hydraulic cylinder that I can use to actuate the dive planes. But I'm actually thinking that I might go with an electric actuator. I have a system of making electric actuators work underwater by air compensating them so they, they don't take on any water. I just use Lenko Marine actuators. So I'm going to have to give that some thought. If I use the hydraulic cylinder as free, I've also already allowed for the hydraulic supply. All I have to do is weld in two fittings in the hull to send hydraulic fluid to the cylinder. I already have the valve and lever and everything in place in the submarine. So it really would be pretty simple to go hydraulic. But I'm also thinking that I want to convert my hydraulic steering to an electric actuator also. So I could just operate the steering with a just a, a joystick of some sort. This way you can sit on the deck and drive the thing or you can sit up front and drive it. So when I put the hydraulic steering system in, I used that because I had it and it was free, but I'm probably just being a little bit too cheap. So maybe an electric actuator is the way to go. I do have an electric actuator, but the thing is so slow. My God, it'd take you all day to turn this thing around. So I need a faster actuator. Anyways, Dive plane. I think it looks super awesome. Now, I've just set it in there. I need to make the bushing assembly and I need to make the pitman arm on it for the hydraulic or electric actuator to attach to. Uh, but I mean, it's a day job. Tomorrow, I'll be able to uh, make the other dive plane and get it all put together. No problem. It's a day job at the most. Then I think I'm going to switch over to the rudder and um, the hydraulic drive motor in the back is not properly secured because I couldn't do that in the other shop. So again, that's a day job back there. Then another day of grinding on all this and then um, I think I could paint it. Ooh, that's kind of cool because anything I have to add to it if I ended up having to weld something or do something, I could just touch it up. I mean, it's flat black, really wouldn't matter. So once you get paint on it, then it really looks like something. And I got to get a piece of acrylic to cover this, the windows. I already got the gaskets for the windows. They're ready. Oh, I got to cut them and put them in. It's really coming along. I'm going to be able to uh, put this thing in the water pretty soon. I shouldn't jinx it though. I better not do that. And I'm very happy my crane can lift it. So I think it can anyways. So that's pretty good news. Oh, I got one more thing to do as well. I gotta put the cooling radiator inside the back ballast tank. That's gonna be a day job. 
But there's not that many day jobs left. It's really, uh, it's really coming along. It's one of these things that all of a sudden it's done. So when I picked up some more steel plate today for my brother, an old uh, blade off a snow plow, that can be just bolted right to the side of this keel once I know the weight. So I'm gonna put it in the water first and then I'll know exactly how much weight because I'll just keep adding weight to the submarine while it's in the water and then you get the precise amount and then you're done. So then you just take all those weights out and then add it to the exterior of the hull, compensating for the volume because stuff doesn't weigh as much underwater. So like this, this 1800 pound keel probably weighs 1500 pounds underwater. So all that has to be compensated for. So no problem. Just keep adding steel. It's easy to add steel. Oh, the other thing I did is I put the, the, um, the drop weight on the front. I didn't like the idea when I started building it of the drop weight on the side of the hull. So now I have a weight on the front above the roller for loading and unloading. And I can add some more weight to that weight and then make a nice uh, cover over it with fiberglass so that it's streamlined. And by fiberglass, I mean I just take chunks of fiberglass that I cut out of a boat and then I fiberglass those pieces together. So it's not like I have to make a mold and all that. So it's pretty easy. This is getting exciting. Anyways, that's it for today. Ciao.